Right. Hi, welcome to this open session in June 2021. Uh, we're going to end up this week with a, a really cool and powerful presentation from Avas uh, on vendor security management using Jira. And this is one of those topics that, you know, a huge amount of effort and huge amount of money sometimes is spent trying to maintain something that if you look at the solution that we end up implementing at, uh, at Glassfall that I was going to show, is actually a really effective way of doing this. And anybody who's done vendor security management will appreciate the power of, you know, having data in this format that is also easy to maintain, is easy to update. So, Abbas, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Um, good afternoon. My name is Abbas Haida. I am the head of IT and InfoSec at Glassfall. Um, John, thanks for joining, Dennis. Um, so basically today we're gonna talk about vendor security management. Uh, what is it? Why is it important? How do you do it? How do you do um, your vendor security at your company? How do you tie that to your contract? How do you tie vendor security in the contract? And how do you manage the security of the third parties you are buying a software from? So basically vendor, vendor Vendor security management can sit in any part of an organization from, I'm talking here from human resources to marketing, supply chain. Um, vendor risk management is, um, it's a very important part of the information risk management and overall um, the risk management process. Um, vendors, I mean, if, you know, if I am to be asked about any company, you know, uh, you know if you ask me like, what is the first threat to a, to company A, I would say vendors, if I don't know what company A do, I would say one of the main, definitely main threat to, to any company are vendors because they pose many risks, including like financial, uh, reputational, <laughs> compliance, legal and uh, regulatory risks. So basically it is a way to deal with, um, it is on the management and monitoring of any problems resulting from third parties and vendors of IT products and other services. So why do we need it? Already explained a little bit. I mean, from a compliance maintenance, I know I always take it as we need to raise the security level. That's why we need it. But I mean, most of the compliance, um, most of the compliance uh, compliances we have are a security compliance is a requirement. They require vendor security management. And we do it to protect our business and customer data. We do it to improve visibility on our vendor security vulnerabilities. We will get through in a, in a, in a moment and it limited data breaches. Basically, if you know what your vendor is doing and uh, if they are following, you know, some security guidelines, at least you will know that, you know, they are, you know, depending on their criticality, you will know what, what, they, they, what kind of risk they might impose to your business. Um, basically, I have been doing, um, um, you know, as a part of, uh, my job, you know, as a head of InfoSec at Glasswall. So basically, I've been doing some Glasswall. I've introduced the Glasswall vendor security management and policies to the business, and uh, which I'm going to present in a minute. I'm just going to show you how do I deal with them. So basically, we use um, a Glasswall. Glasswall have created a, a VSM policy, which is vendor security management policy, to catalog our third parties' vendors. So conduct a three assessment of the risks posed by the third parties. It includes a scoring, a risk scoring and classification. So I'm going to show you this in a minute. So what is, let's say, as you see on the screen here, we have the vendor called Microsoft and possible impact, you know, to our platforms is severe. Likelihood, it is likely vendor risk assessment becomes very high, becomes aut automatically calculated. Um, so we, um, we need to organize and consolidate our existing third-party vendors profile, review and define our procedure for monitoring third parties, which is very important. So as you see on the screen here, I have a review diary. So for my, for my critical vendors, I review them every single year. Other vendors, I might you know, review them um, on another interval. I do as well, we use it to continuously monitor vendor activity. What are they doing? We, we use it as well to remediate any IT security gaps in our third party vendors. So basically what we did is, um, let me show this, how do we do the vendor security management? Let me just show this uh, for one of our vendors and I will show you how I dealt with it and how I deal with it. So basically when I have a vendor, uh, first thing, you know, it goes through pro review processes as you see in JIRA. So, 
we, it's a new vendor, then it goes in review, that gets approved, then it trans transition to be active uh, as it is at the moment. So basically we have a vendor called Microsoft. I think you are all familiar with this one. So um, uh, here we had a couple of things like a description of the, uh, of the vendor, what do they do? And then, so who's the assignee, who's a business owner, who signed it off? What is the department code for this? Uh, compliance URL here, um, you know, we, we used to have them, but then we prefer to, if there is a compliance thing, we can just uh, attach it here. So as you see here, I went to, to our Microsoft vendor, which is a critical one, as I explained before, and I got their SOC 2 report and I attached it here. So who is our account manager at Microsoft? And you see here, we have what accreditation type do they have and any other command you can add here. For my vendors myself that are like, you know, attached to IT systems and as well, I do classification on IT systems myself, but uh, that's the way it works. So basically what we do is we have a review diary. So basically it has been reviewed by me on the 1st of March. Next review for me, it's going to be on the 1st of March, 22. So I'm going to review like the SOC 2 report. I'm going to review... Uh, basically, if you have a SOC 2 report, that's great. Uh, if you don't have like probably ISO 27001, uh, that's fine as well. Um, we, we look at, you know, what kind of certi or what kind of security compliance certification the vendor have. And if they don't have something like this, we go to something like, uh, sorry, uh, something like we have on this here, uh, on this slide here. Basically, we create a vendor security, a vendor security questionnaire, which we send to the customers who don't have a compliance program. Uh, basically, this is used to, um, to evaluate the, you know, the vendor security policies and procedures, but used to probe the security programs, especially if they lack one. Like, you know, we're saying that they don't have SOC 2, they don't have uh, other 27001. And as you see here, it's just a fill some dummy data myself. So um, some information, one of them, does your organization have information security policy and procedures? So imagine like an organization, like, you know, it's gonna deal with your critical data and they don't have any information security policies uh, and procedures. So if there is a data breach, what would you do? So these are the questions you need to ask. Do they have incident response? Uh, how do they handle their incidents? So this, these are like a couple of basic questions that you, not basic, but essential question that we need to ask. So uh, how do we deal with VRM for high vendors? So basically we identify the supplier and the service or product they provide. So as you saw on the previous slide, it was Microsoft and they are supplying us with a couple of things. One of them, let's say Azure subscriptions. Uh, they pick the process flow through which the supplier provide its product or service. So how do they provide that? Identify the types of information being accessed or touched by the supplier, which here is going to tell you the criticality of the supplier. So basically, if the supplier is dealing with your customer data and or your or your like employees' data, you know, um, the risk going to be high. Well, the like you need to check. You know, uh, sorry, the, um, the 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 criticality is going to be high. Um, you need also to identify the critical control points in 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 that information flow. So can you see anything dodgy? Can you see anything like not identified? Identify the controls that should be in place to keep the vendor's business running and maintain confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So if you are using Microsoft Azure for your customers, you need to make sure like that, that you know, um, platform, that cloud platform is accessible. Uh, it is available. Um, you know, you are making sure like, you know, applying all like encryption and stuff like that to maintain confidentiality. Uh, you identify how the vendor will continue to provide services to us, like, you know, during a disaster or an outage. So we had one of the issues with, um, with Azure. So uh, after the first lockdown, apparently the demand was high and that started like to cause some of the products to be slower. So they did a lot of things, you know, they had a couple of things like in the pipeline, Microsoft, they were already like, you know, dealing with the, the problem before it started. So it is very, very, very important to, to check on what, like, what is their disaster or contingency plan? What are their, what is their contingency plan? Um, so we need to identify how the vendor will handle incident management. And this is, you know, I know that's really hard sometimes to get that information, but if they have SOC 2, that will give you like a good, a good SOC 2 type 2 report. That means that they have a good incident management process. Um, establish and maintain a contact with the vendor. As you saw on the previous screen, so I have, a, I have the account manager. 
and I have the support link. Determine how changes will be to, to all the above will be handled and determine how often the above steps will be verified. So this is dependent on, on very verification, depends on the criticality of your, of your vendor. So if the vendor is critical, um, then you need, you need to review probably more than if the vendor is just like medium. Now, the other thing I wanted to touch on is um, what is the best way to manage your vendor security? So you are selling stuff. Um, best thing to do now this nowadays is vendor contracts should be clearly spell out the expectation regarding security policies and procedures. You need to include all of this in your contracts. You need to protocols around security requirements should be written into the vendor contracts, like you know specific security policies. So what is the data classification there? How do we deal with incident management? What are the access controls? Uh, security reviews, periodic audits, incident response. Do they have cyber, you know, make sure you include cyber insurance in there. Risk sharing in the event of a breach. So, um, you know, conduct re regular security audits, demand SOC for cyber security. So, which is very essential. Schedule access and security uh, reviews. Basically, John, so, uh, you're the only one on this uh, presentation today. So this was my presentation for the day. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you. It's a very uh, <laughs> compelling presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I just, um, I can just can think about uh, the process in Jira you showed in yeah. one slide and in a demo shortly. Could you explain a little more how it's implemented in your organization as part? Is this yeah, a, basically, yeah. basically. So we use Jira as our like uh, like our own um, database, and basically, the, basically all of this is depending uh, dependent on you know, on a SOC audit we started. So basically when we acquire a new vendor, so let's say we are in talk with them, um, which is fine. So I can show you, so I can create a new vendor. So let's say vendor open security the summit. And I'm gonna assign it to myself. I'm not gonna specify any priorities. I'm just gonna go and create it. I'm gonna click on that and then it's a blank it's a black thing now, so there is no information in there. So basically, I'm gonna go and say um, vendor assessment rating. Uh, sorry, so the likelihood is for us, it's just like, you know, uh, we, it's not a critical system for us, Open Security Summit. So it is, uh, and the possibility of an attack, it's a static website, so it is very unlikely. Possible impact, I think here it's gonna be minor. And here I did not automate this one, which can bring the vendor assessment trading too low. Basically, I want to check who's the business owner. So who's the person who wanted this um, vendor? So let's say here it is, I'm going to say it is me, so I don't show other people data. <laughs> and uh, who signed it off? So usually it is the CFO, you type in the name here, CFO. Hmm. A department code that's not required here, compliance URL. So Compliance, what do they have? So if they have SOC 2 for me, or they have Aussie 27, Southern 1, Southern 1, or any recognized uh, good security compliance um, certification. So I'm gonna go and attach it, and just gonna go and drop it in here. And I say, that's good for me, because you know I know if they have a good type two report, SOC 2 type two report, or Aussie 27, Southern 1, it means they have followed all the processes for incident management. You know, basically, checking what kind of incident management they have on the other end is really hard. You're not going to be able to get to that. But I mean, these at least are indicators to you. Um, where, what is their website? Where is their address? I, I think they are now on, in terms of address, this is all the style. I think I need to take this out. What is the email account that we can reach out like to our account manager? Who's the account manager? Where is our vendor agreement location? Because, you know, with all these like AWS, Microsoft, um, you know, you have a vendor agreement, so you don't, they don't send you a contract that you sign. Yes. So the vendor agreement, which is available for everyone. And then you go and, ex, you know, take the accreditation type, let's say SOC 2, employee count if you want to, how long has been established? I mean, this question, I know how long established, that does not mean much these days. I mean, these were like, I think this question was like maybe 10 years ago, could have been much, much more valid. So probably something I need to relook really at. But that's the way. So after I say, okay, I've done all the information here, I'm going to go and 
move this to in review, which will send this to the manager here to the assignee here. He's gonna go and review and say, I've checked all this information. They look okay for me because this is start of IT. So oh, this information all good or like, you know, uh, with, the, with the first line, let's say with uh, marketing, um, with the marketing, with the marketing people, like, you know, it starts from the marketing, marketing like um, officers, then goes to the manager and goes uh, and goes above. So after you review it, uh, say, this is because this is not a critical. So when did I review it? Sorry. So I reviewed it today because I can see this is not a very critical system to me. So I think I'm going to review it in two years because it does not have any customer data for me. So I'm going to go to, to June 23 and I'm going to go and yeah, just do it there. After I do this, yeah, so who did approve it? So it was myself in this case. Um, but basically here, the SOC 2 approval comes from, um, or is from the security team. So after you change it from in review, um, you know, let's say here it was, I've done this early. So if let's say it was a security officer, he sent it for approval and that will, let's say, who's the business owner? So the business owner is myself here, but I can change this to Dennis Cruz. Uh, so I can change Dennis, Dennis Cruz. What's the possible impact? That's my, that's my view here because I'm the assignee. I'm going to request approval. That will go to Dennis. Dennis then need to go and do his job. And move it because I have a global admin here, so that's why uh, on, on this on this project, not on the whole thing. So I'm gonna transition it to approved, and I'm gonna make. You need to put a comment here. All good, as an example. So I will delete this vendor later on. Sure. Done. All good. So basically, that's how we deal with it. But there's one more thing. If if the vendor does not have SOC two or any recognized security compliance, what we do is, as I showed, showed you here, we go and send them this questionnaire, which has about 30 questions about basic stuff about their, um, about their vendor security. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do. We go and send, you know, this form, it, you know, and they fit the, you know, the vendor will fill it and will come and we save it on our SharePoint and, or, and in here in Jira. Uh, some vendors like, like, so um, because vendors here, it depends on the criticality of the other systems we have of them. So you see here, we have Azure subscription. If I go in there, because I can't show the information, yeah. it's going to be multiple Azure subscription. Who are the owners? And, and that's how we determine the criticality for the business. Um, so basically it depends because this one is just a vendor. Uh, you know, for the vendor, for this vendor in particular, he has multiple IT, IT systems. So yeah. that we look after. And that's how we determine the whole, uh, sorry, impact severity. Do you have also created a dashboard for an overview? Oh, of the yeah, I did. I did create a dashboard. So good, good thing. So vendors. And um, so if I click on the dashboard here, it's going to show me overview vendors. I don't have any um, vendors next review within 10 days. I don't have any vendor review within next 100 days. I have something here. Um, these are random vendors. So um, yeah, so that's, that's how it works. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you very much for this presentation. So. No worries, no worries. Thank you. Thanks for attending, to be honest. I'm going to stop the recording now. How do I stop the recording?